Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Well, hey, Calvary, thanks for tuning in for your word for the day today on this wonderful Halloween. I hope that you have some plans uh, to at least enjoy a little bit of candy. And uh, if you've got kids around, I hope that you have a great time uh, dressing up and celebrating with them. And uh, we will leave the uh, theological discussion of Halloween for a different day uh, because we've got Matthew chapter 10, verses 1 through 4 to look at. And if you've ever wondered who were the disciples, and, and why did Jesus pick them? And, and what's, uh, what's the deal with the disciples? We can't tackle all of that. That's a fairly deep topic. Um, but we're going to look at a little bit of that because in Matthew 10, verses 1 through 4, it says, And he, that is Jesus, called to him his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every disease and affliction. And that gives us a list because they've been talking about the disciples and, and it mentioned several of their calls. And, and, and Matthew wants to pause and go, oh, by the way, here is the final list. Here are the people. The names of the 12 apostles are these. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, Judas, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. We get a little forecasting here and a little commentary from Matthew. So here's uh, the, the 12 apostles that Jesus selected. And, and I got three things that I, I want to just highlight at a top level, because there's so much richness in their stories. I'd love to dig into each one of their stories and how they got to this place. But unfortunately, that will have to wait for another day. But there's three big things that I see here. And the first is that, that God chooses to use people to accomplish his purpose. Uh, and that's such an amazing truth that we get to be reminded of here. And, and the context is important because just a few verses prior to this, Jesus is talking, he's looking around the world and this need for ministry and evangelism and sharing the gospel. And he says that the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. And he says, pray therefore that God would send out workers. And what does he do in response? He says, hey, let's send out some workers. And he equips these 12 men with gospel impact, that the, the ability to have power and impact. He didn't have to do that, though. He could have done that himself. He could have just multiplied his own efforts and had some miraculous uh, experience there. But he chose to use uh, men, people, to go in and carry out his purposes to the world. And that same philosophy carries true today. And we get to be the wonderful recipients of that good news. The other thing that we see as we read this is just the incredible diversity of these, these apostles. We have tax collectors. You've got this uh, revolutionary a zealot is this like, you know, a disruptor politically. You've got uh, Judas who became the betrayer, uh, who had some corruption even in how he managed the, the finances of Jesus' ministry and some of the, the other background things that we come to learn through the gospel. And we also have fishermen that show up there. We have brothers. We have people from all walks of life. And I think that's important because sometimes we think that, well, if I'm going to serve and represent Jesus, I need to look a certain way. I need to have a certain background. I need to have a certain pedigree or certain education, a certain uh, experience level or, or background in that. But Jesus uses people from all walks of life, from all different skill sets, from all different careers and, and environments, which means that if you put your faith and trust in Jesus and, and you uh, give yourself as a willing servant, then, then you can be used in whatever context you're in uh, to be used for his mighty purposes. And the last thing that we see here is that he uses imperfect people to do this as well. We're reminded there in the 12 that Judas is the one who would end up betraying him. And, and through that time, though, he was serving alongside the other 11. He was serving with Jesus. He was seeking to, to be a, a disciple. But these other people, tax collectors, revolutionaries, fishermen who, well, we know how they talk. Um, we, they have these backgrounds. They have these imperfections in their life. And the same is true that, that if you are willing, if you put your faith and trust in Jesus, if you go, hey, I'm, I'm willing, Lord, to be used by you in any way that I can, and I'm just here in faith following you, that he can work with that. He can work with imperfect people to accomplish his perfect purposes in our world. But it all comes back to, are you going to be a willing servant? Are you going to say, hey, I'm on team Jesus. I'm surrendering my life to following and serving him in any way. Because if you do that, 
then you get to be a part of God's perfect purposes to our world. And I hope that you are on Team Jesus and you get to be a part of that process. Have a great day, Calvary. We'll see you next time.